This trackway is the one for us to reach our goal. We will meet small Viking parties, but their main force is elsewhere. Your grandfather taught us never to fear Vikings, but we have a clear purpose here. Seeking out Vikings will reduce our chances of success. That's right, son. Just think of the planning we have made and the money we have spent on this warband. Wait, what lies yonder? Just what we were talking about. We can take this group easily in battle, but it's still better to avoid engagement. The trackway has a fork at this hedgerow. We can rejoin our old route at the river crossing yonder. <laughs> An English warband? Damn you English dogs. Meet the steel of Thor. They were not expecting the finest of your royal guards. <laughs> That's for sure. Amen. We need to go faster now. Gee up! I am Edward, son of Alfred and king of the Anglo-Saxons. Your abbey is the resting place of St Oswald, our great English king, who took the true faith and brought it to the Northumbrians. We wish to take his holy relics and bring them to English Mercia. You must consecrate our quest so that the Lord will favour our armies against the Vikings. <laughs> It is truly a wonder. God deliver us from the Danes, in the name of St. Oswald. Amen. Amen. We will translate St. Oswald to a tomb worthy of his holy name. Ha ha ha! What a lark! We are not yet done. Let us hasten back to Gloucester. The Danes will not be happy about this either. They will seek retribution. And here they are. Ride faster! Faster! Blow the war horn! Man the militia! Grab your sword and shield and meet the enemy! Save our king! Did brave King Edward into Daneland go For to get the bones of our hero Saint Oswald, firm of faith of English kings About whom the angels dance and sing King Edward Lady Athelflaed, Prince Athelstan, brought the relic to our England. Harper, come this way. Yes, Your Majesty. Here's a reward for you. Write me a song about this fine horn of ale and crispy spit roast swine. The militia of this town has served us well. I would like all of you to join another warband going into the Dane's land at Cockrow. The warband will harry the Dane and take plunder, of which every fighter can share. Tomorrow we must return to Gloucester. I worry for my Lord Athelred and dear Elfwyn. And I must return to Winchester. We must be on our guard these coming months. We have irritated the monster, and he will come unto us. It will come like Grendel unto Beowulf. We will be ready. We have the advantage in a defensive war. I have sealed our western frontier with fortresses and continued father's alliances with the Welsh kings. We look east. You still need to build more forts. For that matter, so do I. Perhaps we can have a race for it, sister. I have seen many promising places. I am sure I can outbuild you, brother. When we reconquer, I will get more than you too. 
No need for concern. <laughs> Let us play the table game, sister. I'll be a Danish king in one of the five boroughs, and you have command of the attack. Bring the board on. Checkmate. Gah! So close. Best of three. Ha! The Danish king is dead. Mm. Well, I'm going to believe it. Maybe you will do more than me. We'll keep count. <laughs> I'm not even that good at the table game. Athelstan beats me every time. Oh? Let's have a game, my boy. How did they dare ride clean all the way to Lindsay and get their saint's bones? English dogs. We will take the fight right back to them. But an army over Watling Street will fail. The English towns are now too strong. Better to act as our forefathers and assail them from the sea. Yes, we will go to sea in our trusty longboats. Surprise them before we lay waste to their towns. Man the boats! Let's put to sea! <laughs> It's happening again. Father! Oh, thy sickness gets ever worse. But we can call your fever. Uh, Elf, we know. My child, every sight of you makes me wish to live more. Please just hold on to my hand. Mother has returned. She is speaking to the Thanes of Gloucester. People of Gloucester! We bring back St. Oswald's bones from the Danelaw. Now we will consecrate our new priory as St. Oswald's. It will be a burial chamber fit for saints and kings. Your mother has proven to be the saviour of the English. I can despair at my ruined body, but I, I can be light in knowing that our realm is strong and secure. There is not a Thane in all Mercia who does not admire the progress of building and armies. He is her father's daughter, and everybody says so. Yes. So they said she was forged in warfare. Aye, what days they were. The darkest that ever descended upon us. We hung on by our teeth. I, 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 I will sleep. My child. The great heathen army was ravaging all over Britain. Grandpa would often send his wife and children to Somerset for safety. <laughs> then, even the royal fort of Chippenham was overrun by Vikings, just after Christmas. Grandpa and Grandma fled to the marshes. Mother was only a girl, but by then she had a little brother who was four years younger. We need swords, lots of swords. When you are done with that one, at least another five. Yes, Your Majesty. Look over here, a huge pile of cakes. Oh no, someone burned them. They're horrible. I bet it was Dad. But Grandpa won his famous victory over the heathen army at Eddington.
After this great victory had secured peace, Grandpa insisted that his children be taught to read and write, or at least to read. Thank you, my love, for this service to the children. As my own mother, Osber, taught me, I remember so well. The ladies of Wessex have to find other diversions. I find reading a great consolation. Now, this sentence. The Lord is ward of the loaves, and the lady makes the dough of the loaves. The Lord is ward of the loaves, and the lady makes the dough of the loaves. Here, bread, butter, and green cheese. Bread, butter, and green cheese. Father has returned with a great gain of property from the Vikings. Can we go to greet them, Mother? Please? Oh, I suppose so. We need to get the British kings of Wales on our side to help fight the pagans. But they all come to me talking of battles with you. Ah, but you know they kick my behind. <laughs> Forget them. The coming battle is to regain the Dane law. But which city is a key to unlock the Heptarchy? Where a Kentish man may walk to business with a man of Surrey, a Mercian, a Middle Saxon, or an East Saxon. London Wick. Children, it's time for your bed. Grandpa and father finally took London. We're coming on well with repairing Caesar's old walls in London. Of course, they are nothing to the great crags of the Eternal City, but all the mints and markets of the old wick are safe within them. As you said years ago, London is the key to holding the English. We're a Mercian, an East Saxon and a man of Kent may drink ale together. <laughs> My lord, I will make it our English redoubt against the Danes. But there is more. Ethel Flade my pet, what say thee to taking to wife with my lord Ethelred in Gloucester? My lord Ethelred has lived many winters. He is my father's dearest thane. How could I refuse such an honour? But the truth is, I have clung to his legs since he would return from fighting the Danes with father. Ha! Ha! And you were listening to our battle plans even then. You will like it in Gloucester, Elf Leader. We have men of learning, women of skill, libraries of books, and you will help me to build a great stone minster of the Lord, safe from the Vikings. I will also thank you, Father, for granting the new town of Londonburg to my Lord Ethelred. London is your dowry, my child. We will publish the bans of marriage forthwith. But now, Edward and Elfrith, you will both attend my new court school, staffed by the finest scholars in Mercia and Europe. <laughs> So mother and father built the Minster and fortified Gloucester as they had fortified London. I was born, but my coming was difficult for mother. The child has come. Praise be that both of you are safe. All of Gloucester were offering their prayers. Please, my lord, would I never have to endure such a pain again. If it is your wish, Elf Leader. Uncle Edward finished from Grandpa's school and won his spurs by beating the Danes at Farnham and pushing them over the River Colne. The Lady Equin also bore him a fine young atheling, for which Grandpa thanked the Lord. <laughs> With this finest cloak of scarlet silk, with this belt set with jewels from the high north to Ethiopia and Araby, with this sword made by my swordsmiths from the hardest steel, in a scabbard plated with pure gold, I invest Athelstan as princeps anglorum. We will return to Gloucester, but I ask Father for his English version of Saint Gregory to guide our clergy and improve them. I need to ask you to take one more thing back to Mercia. Your nephew, Athelstan. Yes, yes. Great idea, Father. Let's be frank. It's awkward for Athelstan to stay here in Winchester. 
I can't think of better godparents than Elfleda and Athelred. Where's Auntie Equin? Shh. You are always welcome at our hall in Gloucester, Athelstan. But I dare say you will also make a fine playmate for our Elfwyn. Then Grandpa went the way of all flesh. <laughs> Wait, wait. Stay in there, so. Look for some dock leaves. Oh, these are really good. Look, a daisy chain. I will be the queen. It is you that will be the king. Now your father has become so. Here, see if the buttercup shows yellow on your chin. Hey, that tickles. Athelstan! Elfwina! Oh, we'd better go. Enough fun for now, children. Time for supper and your lessons with Brother Egfrith. I like Brother Egfrith. He teaches us Grandfather's translation of Orosius. You have caught your grandfather's disease of learning for its own sake. But Mother Elfrida. It is you who has afforded us a school that is even better than Grandfather's. It was my bounden duty, not just to my father, but dear Mother Aylesworth, who has only just left us. Office, the ladies of Wessex have to find other diversions. I find reading a great consolation. That's also why, dear Elfwina, you must attend to your studies as much as Athelstan. Yes, Mother. King Edward will arrive shortly. The clean air of Mercia pleases me greatly. Winchester is such a nest of vipers, even though Father Plegmund is of our party and consecrated me as king with the war helm, as Father wished. I am pleased that Father left you estates and many gold coins. And a magnificent sword! Many a battle did I fight alongside this righteous sword. I am honoured that the king has left it to me. Our cousin Athelwald is happy to be made king by the Danes, but we will prevail. It makes me understand that here in Gloucester is the English Freedom League, who see a future when our country is free of barbarians, rather than jealously fighting each other. I believe it is right that we continue what was started by our father. The English should follow Father's Book of Laws, in which he put the ancient laws of Ine and Offa, as well as his own. We will advance again, learning and piety, and continue to rebuild our country. Oh, that reminds me. I nearly forgot. You did ask me to bring some of these candle clocks that Father invented to tell the hour of the night. That's right. I feel lost if I do not know what time it is, when I am woken suddenly at night. But there's more. Look at this one. Do you see this nail? Suppose you wish to be woken from sleep at a certain hour, or you are just roasting a swine and do not wish to burn it. After the time you have set, the beeswax has gone and the nail will fall to make a sound. How clever, Uncle Edward. Of Father's many works, I like this one. It has a use for everyone, not just scholars. You are making me wish to have joined you and Elfthrith at Father's school. Although I hated it at first, Father was right that we have the word and the pagans do not. For instance, here. You can use this to instruct your Mercian candlestick makers how to produce the clocks. So you can have as many as you need, or indeed, anyone else. Thank you very much, my brother. 
Perhaps one day we will not need to make a new clock after every night it had been used. Perhaps one day we will not have to carry our treasury in chests of silver coins. <laughs> <laughs> I am sorry for taking you into Mercia, my lady. Oh, if Edward speaks the truth, it was a blessing. Here in Mercia we do not lack for men of learning. Our own children's school is not less than any other. I hope it is enough. For our crafts in wood, metal and stone, I have been eager to endow our churches like at Much Wenlock. Indeed. But back to business. Brother Ethelred, we need to fortify Mercia better. Here at Gloucester we are strong. So are the old forts of Hereford and Shrewsbury. But we need to rebuild Chester as the linchpin against both the North Welsh and the Danes of York. Also, we need to take Worcester from its saintly masters to provide for its proper defence and settlement. Perhaps a charter will help. That is readily granted. The bishop wishes it as much as you. Now, Athelstan, my boy, how find thee the home of Elfleda and Athelred? It is congenial to me, father. Athelred and Elfleda are kind to me like a true father and mother, and Elfwyn is my dearest sister. Good boy. Well, I must leave you for now. Farewell, brother. God be with you. But our happiness was not to last for long. Father was stricken with an ague. Take my Lord Athelred to his bed. Send for the monk with life potions. Yes, my lady. My Lord. I, I, I live. But my spirit is finished. But the campaign in Chester, all of our provisions are ready for leaving tomorrow. Oh, thou must. Command it, Elfleda. Nobody trusts you more than me. Take young Athelstan with thee. My lord! We have heard Lord Ethelred, my lady. We will be to you as to him. You shall lead us, nay, even into battle. Elfwina, my pet. You must attend your father in his sickness. I would do nothing more willingly, mother. I will care for father until he is whole again. You have a visitor, my lady. It is King Anorod Ap Rodri of Gwyneth, King of the Britons. Show him every courtesy and offer him our best victuals. All of you can leave, except for Athelstan and the four. Greetings, Your Majesty. We are pleased to welcome you to our new city. It is most impressive, my lady. You will need to be strong against the pirates. There are now more of them abroad than ever. What do you know? King Flan's sin of Ireland has driven the Viking King Ingemunder out of Dublin, so he comes marauding to our shores. He tried to take Anglesey, but we chased him away. Thank you for your helpful words, Your Majesty. Where goes the Viking Sea King now? It is said that his men have taken Amounderness and the Ribble Valley, with designs to be kings of York. I'm hoping that the English will take battle to this Norseman pagan. We are ready to repulse them when they attack. Pray, this be your nephew, Prince Thasselstan? You've heard so much about him. It is Aunt Ethelfreda who has built this city. Her ladyship is as her father, with clear and bold intentions. Ingimunda, we would run you from this land, but we will let you stay on the condition that you do not come to Chester and aid us with protection from your Danish cousins. So be it.
Thunder! Your oath only ever had the worth of a heathen pirate. People, launch your projectiles! <laughs> to launch the Mead and the Beehives now! <laughs> Truly did Queen Ethelfleda harry the Norsemen from Chester in such a thorough fashion that their force is annihilated. The Vikings are so proud that nothing pains them more than ridicule and humiliation. <laughs> Seriously, sister, this is too far. I am king to there, don't you know? Adderord curries my favour, but he also wants to invite your jealousy. By the grace of God, I am jealous. <laughs> you have secured Mercia so strongly that you can sit here in Gloucester and receive your poor brother Edward trying to be king in the rest of the English realm. Ha! Your realm misses one important part. The Dane law. That is true, but I think we can take it back after we are secure. It is you that has the main force and the hardest task to retake East Anglia, where the Danes are most settled. Yet Mercia can also assist with you in control, making my armies toil half as much. It will be a long, hard campaign, but thanks to your beehives in Chester, we are in a position to take the initiative, dictate the pace of the war, have an offensive posture rather than defensive. That is the key to it, brother. Try this. Rather than start the invasion, Let's just do a raid. Something to prove we can operate in the Dane law as we wish. Let us take the relics of St Oswald in Lindsay. Now that's my clever sister talking again. I will lead this raid, because being king still opens doors, don't you know? Excellent. And you will come with us, Athelstan. This sounds like a sport. An adventure to bloody the pirates' noses and put them on notice that we will retake their realm. I am excited to join in. I will take care of father. I would also like to join this warband, if I could. All I have is the advice of an old warrior. Never turn your back to a Viking. Keep your sword sharp and your wits about you. Farewell, Elfina. Look after yourselves. May God protect you all. Amen. Mother has returned. She is speaking to the Thanes of Gloucester. People of Gloucester, we bring back St Oswald's bones from the Danelaw. Now we will consecrate our new priory as St Oswald's. It will be a burial chamber fit for saints and kings. Yes, we will go to sea in our trusty longboats. Surprise them before we lay waste to their towns. Man the boats! Let's put to sea! I can take the Northern Dane Law, and you, the Southern. We meet in the Five Boroughs area and Lincoln, back where we started at Bardney. For this, I must subdue the whole of East Anglia. Then Northampton leads me to the five boroughs. But the militia is strong. We have enough and spare. The pirates have sailed up the Severn and are causing havoc. Grendel has come. Whence do they come? What is their force? 
Where are they now? They are led by Ingwe of Northumbria, backed by Hafdan and Eowels, the kings of York. Their host is in the tens of thousands. They have sailed high up to Severn and are in the area north of Worcester. They come just to pillage and plunder, so now they return to their ships. It is good for us to have so many of their kings in one place. I will bring the militia from Chester and Shrewsbury, Athelstan from Hereford and Worcester. Then I will bring the royal militia of Wessex through Oxford. We will surround them. It's time to ride. Sister, are you sure? This isn't a band of ragtag pirates like Ingimunda. This will be a major battle. Many of our own side will die. Take the shield and sword, Aunt Elf Leader. I will take my sword, but my four thanes will also come. Edwin, Wilfred, Herbert and Harold. Let us pray to St Oswald that we may have the field of battle. <laughs> I will go, and you will be by my side, Lady Afleda. I will protect thee as mightily as Samson, with the charm of thy father's sword. And I cannot abandon my dear Efwina, who kept me alive. She must come too, but she will be safe, as St. Oswald told me himself. That felt like a close call. How is your rune, Brother Athelred? I still live. It is God's mercy. I have had my fill. I will retire to sleep. By the grace of God, did Father Athelred make the greatest sacrifice to deliver us from the pagans. Amen. Our Lord is gone, but our Lady still lives. Let us proclaim her. Mercian Lady. Hail, Ethelfleda, Mercian Lady. We are all upset over the end of Brother Athelred, but sister, you must carry on with your command of our northern flank. That Mercian Lady title, I like it. Mercian Lady, you tell them what to do. Yes, back to where we were before this bother. Do you know what? We will bury Athelred in his priory, but I cannot stay in Gloucester now. I wish to retake Tamworth, which the Vikings left in ruins. Excellent choice. It is to reclaim Mercia's ancient seat, another taught to our enemies. It is very run down since the pagans sacked it, but I've no doubt you'll make it fit to live in for kings of the English realm. As Watling Street runs just to the south of it, it is by treaty part of the Danelaw. The High Fortress sees deeply into Danish territory, making it an ideal forward base. Precisely. But nothing annoyed me more than not having a fort right at the northern bridge on the Severn, which would have stopped them dead. That's a town which can't wait. But there's this. If I'm marching into East Anglia, I want Oxford and London on my back. You don't need my permission, brother. The Alderman of London, come make the pledge to your new overlord. Hey, do you remember that table game we played? From our bet to see who'd build the most new cities, capture the most cities from the pagans. But I've got a secret weapon, Athelstan. 
And yes, the bet is on, brother. But with one condition. Oh? It's fair with the money. Oh, yes. Like you asked for. Fifty pounds of silver blanks and working mints in Shrewsbury and Chester. That will make you twelve thousand pennies. Thank you, brother. That will be good. Well, we'll scope out what needs to be done at Tamworth, but I want to set up the fort at Bridge North right away. Summon the money at Edmund. My brother gives us his warrant for minting coins, but I want our Mercian pennies to differ from his, stand out even. Perhaps a great church. The other side of the coin to the king's name. How about this one, my lady? Not only is it a church, but also a reliquary box. Yes! Perhaps Brother Edward will remember our raid in Bardney. Yes! Put this on the back of our coins. Very good, my lady. His Majesty King Edward. Queen Ethelflaed's pennies. All the Welsh and the Vikings call them that, even though my name is on them. <laughs> Building forts doesn't come cheaply, brother. I have started this year building the town of Stafford, and it is about complete. Next year we will start the town of Warwick, but there aren't nearly enough forts. I'll probably end up with about seven, including a new fort opposite Chester, guarding the Mersey at Runcorn. I need a pier there for your navy, and I need all the pennies I can mint. Well, sister, that is many more forts than me. At the moment, I'm looking at just Hartford, more or less completely new, and Buckingham, which needs its walls beefing up, and London doesn't count. My gains will be from conquest rather than building. Right now, Maldon and Southern Essex are looking ripe for the taking. Dear Brother Edward, King Anarod of Gwyneth is no more. Wales is weak. We need to talk about your vassals on the other side of the dyke, as well as our forthcoming strike into the Danelaw. Tell Lady Ethelfleda I'm on my way to Tamworth. Anarod's nephew King Hyle is making himself an empire in South Wales he calls Dehobarth. It is through he that we will gain the submission of the Welsh. There is also news that the pirates have despoiled and taken the lands of their British cousins in Brittany, on the Francia side. I worry for the coast of St David's. It is vulnerable to pirates from Francia. Tis why those kings must be subregulars to Wessex, but we must also be ready to fight there ourselves. And with that kind of insecurity about, our sub-king in Brecon caused great displeasure here in Mercia. The English abbot, Egbert, was brutally slain by the scheming queen. Very Queen Eadberg. I was sorely angry. Egbert was just abbot, and a sweet soul. I sent my thanes to burn her palace and bring her here with all her retinue. I know a murderer should be put to death, but I showed mercy. I just left her penniless outside Tamworth's walls and told her to go home. The townspeople spat on her, called her names and pelted her with rotten vegetables. It was punishment enough. I find it amusing that you concern yourself with the mere wife of a Welsh underking when you are contemplating an assault on the fearsome Viking armies of the Danelaw. <laughs> that is so true, brother. And you, at last, marching on Bedford to claim East Anglia. We are on the eve of attacking the Danes directly. It is a great time, 
but there will also be great slaughter. I suppose then that this is the time for farewells. We both face battle, but with different foe. Good luck, and God speed you, my dear brother Edward, the great King Edward. May we both have the field of battle for one Englerland. The same for you, Sister Elfleda, Mercian Lady, Queen of the Britons. Godspeed. Now we have the defences to make the North impregnable. Yet the Vikings continue trying to break out. It is surely time to begin our assault. Leicester is nearer, but larger and better defended. Maybe they will not consider us taking Derby. It is the most Danish of the five boroughs, as even we use their name for it. English! We challenge four of your best men to single combat. If they win, we will surrender. Here. As you wish it. Such a fight will save bloodshed. We we like like we we are. Are. Charge! Show no mercy! <laughs> Darby humbly accepts your overlordship, my lady. That's better, deceitful swine. Take him to the midden and bind him with chains. <laughs> Never again such a pointless contest. We either beat the pirates or they surrender. We will hold rights for Edwin's men and bury them as Christians. Yes, my lady. No Viking was as good as his word. I think of my brother, but it is no longer a game. Well, we master their city. Father is now marching to take East Anglia. The English force has become overwhelming. They just keep coming. From all the militias summoned by beacons and war horns, travelling far, far from here, I think we'd better just surrender. Yes, you heard about what happened at Derby. I don't think chains are a good look. No, let's put Valhalla on hold for now. My lord surrenders, Lady Athelfleda. You are invited to take the pledges of Leicester. Can we trust them? Well, we will take Leicester. We humbly accept the overlordship of Queen Ethelfleda. Thank you. We need to make a meeting in your mead hall. It is from King Edward. He's moving against Nottingham. He says, now we are even. I will let him have Lincoln now. We have a good chance here to capture York. Then it will be checkmate, dear brother. York, indeed. King Owen of Strathclyde sends me. He allies with King Constantine of Alba. We are ready to move south to attack Viking Northumbria, Queen Ethelfleda. Earl Ildred of the English in Northumbria joins his force to this attack, Your Majesty. It is praiseworthy that all can put aside their differences to fight Vikings. We will also move our forces over the Humber towards York. St. Oswald will be pleased that we shall recover his kingdom. O 
All the lords and merchants of Jorvik have together agreed to accept the overlordship of Queen Ethel Fleda. Her Majesty is invited to take the oaths of her earls in Jorvik. We thank you for your journey and your message. Please tell your lords that we will travel to York forthwith. Truly now, we are masters of all the English, from the Forth to the Channel. Gah! York! Without a single battle! Surely you have won our table game, sister. Take this to the walls of Snottingham. They will quickly see there is no Viking force coming from the north to their aid, and no more point to resist our siege. all along, ever since you were born, dear Elfwina. But, Mother, you can't die now. You are the Queen of York. Oh, God wills it, Elfwina. My only child, the Earldom of Mercia, is yours. But Brother Edward will not allow it. He wants only that our towns govern our shires. He is still the King, but... He is not liked by our friends in the north. Mother! <laughs> Find a man to marry far from Mercia. And... <coughs> Athelstan, you will be a great king, greater than your father, of all the English, the Welsh and the Scots. <coughs> by God Almighty, Mother... Ethelfleda is surely in the highest and fairest heaven, returned to her lord. Um. Mother Elfleda, Mother Elfleda has, has gone the way of all flesh, Father. What? Oh, no. No, 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 no. No way. We were just getting started, by the grace of God and Jesus. She was running the North so well. What we could have done with her dealing with Alba and the Norse Vikings. What we could have done. But her mercy is wonderfully strong. She told me about her next fort town north of the Mersey. She went to look at an old ruined Roman town, said to be on hills like the breast of a woman. Let us build on that town, son, to remember her. Oh yes, from the old Roman name, it is now called Mancaster. I will return to Tamworth, father, and gather the warband to build Mancaster. Excellent. It will be as she would have built it. But Mercia... Who will be in charge? Not Elfwina. She's a nice girl, but she's not up to it. You will do far better. I will remain in Mercia. By the ancient laws of Mercia do we proclaim Elfwin as our Mercian lady. All hail Elfwin! Mercy and Lady! Thank you for your pledges. Let us now ensure that Mother's remains are placed where they belong, at the side of dear father Athelred in St Oswald's. I will come back with thee to Gloucester. It is a place of great memory. 
This meadow is as fair as when we were children, Elfwina. Yes, it is beautiful. Look, Father will come for Mercia. I cannot stop him. But I will make sure you are not mistreated. Uncle Edward is proud to be king of all the English, but he is not a wicked man. Elfwina, I must take you into my kingdom. My sister bore the title well. I grieve her as you do, believe me. But please now remember, we are all one kingdom of the Anglo-Saxons. And you, my boy, you will be my Earl of Mercia. But now you must meet your stepmother and your half-brothers in Winchester. It is time. Oh, your Mercian thanes, they mourn the end of Mercia. They do not see that Wessex is finished just as much as Mercia. Wessex is shired just as Mercia is shired. Every shire of Mercia and Wessex has a shire reeve collecting taxes for me. It is new to them, my lord. They will become accustomed to it. If not Mercia nor Wessex, what then is the realm of Angelkun? Now that is a good question, worthy of your mother. Maybe Ingleland? <laughs> I don't know. Still, I wish that the Mercian regard for my sex obtained in Wessex or the rest of Ingleland. Wessex once had queens until one day there was a queen from Mercia named Edeburg. She poisoned her rivals for the king's affection, but once by accident poisoned the king himself. Our ancestor, King Egbert then forbade Wessex from recognising queens. I think I do not want to go into Wessex. I can understand your feelings. As I said in there, I truly grieve your mother, who was the opposite of such an Edeburg. Sister Elfleda possessed learning and Christian mercy in equal measure. She made her victories in open battle through superior skill and intellect, not base scheming and shameful cunning. I really do miss her. I really do. I felt for Mother Elswith, who couldn't even witness a charter. She made up for it by doing God's work. But this name, Edeburg, it is a fine name. I will give this name to one of my daughters in the hope that she will one day become a saint. I am just a happy elf. Like your grandfather, the wise elf. <laughs> How about this? My new Earl in East Anglia is a fine young man who is looking for a wife. But we must be quiet, for the Mercians must not know you are there. I will go to look. It really was a shame that canon law forbade a marriage of you and Aethelstan. Something that peasants do all the time to no ill effect. Because Aethelstan could not get you, he prefers chastity. Yes, Uncle Edward, it is true. Uncle Edward died of wounds fighting the Thanes in Cheshire, who didn't like his newfangled Shire system. Cousin Althastan became a glorious and heroic first king of the English. For his coronation, he forsook the old war helm and took a crown like the great princes of Europe 
who recognised his mastery of Britain. He added greatly to the law book of his grandfather, but he didn't live long. And me? I married another Elthastan, called Just a Half-King. Like my mother, I fostered a handsome young Atheling who became a great king of the English. Edgar the Peaceful. Thank you.